Welcome to the Black Advancement. My name is Ajiman Jasante Goodman, and on the screen I have with me today, Greg Goodman, Brandon Coney, C O O, and Antoine Smallwood. And like I said, this is the Black Advancement. Before we get into it, let's talk about what the Black Advancement is. The Black Advancement is a nonprofit organization that looks to combat the problems within the Black community through action and dialogue. This being a dialogue portion. Uh, before we get into the topic for the day, let's do a little front street. Seemingly everyone that is in the United States is, that has ever been done wrong has been compensated through land or payment and other means, except for black people, at least in America. An ungodly number of lives and money were tied up in the institution of slavery with amounts ranging in the billions of dollars amassed through it. For nearly a century after America became a sovereign nation, slavery could grow and fester with death and profit growing right beside it. It was not until hundreds of thousands of lives were lost in the Civil War that Black people en masse could even whisper of a freedom and a chance to finally oversee their own destinies. Well, almost. With no education, property, or anything else to call their own, uh, Black people were set free to nothing. Adding insult to slavery, the gains proposed and even passed to help eradicate these disadvantages were undermined with concentrated efforts made to torpedo these proposals once again, leaving the black, the greater black population, I should say, destitute. A fair argument could be made that uh, black Americans have never reached full citizenship until roughly 1964 or 65, leaving hundreds of years of mistreatment and claims for black people that have been unrecognized. So with all that being said, and with the great debate of reparations being taken place for all this time, if, when, and how any reparations will be given to Black Americans, will that somehow destroy the Black community? So with that, first question, is there a valid reason for not giving reparations to the descendants of slaves? I'll go with, uh, I'll go with Greg first. Oh, there is absolutely no valid reason why that should not happen or occur. Uh, the only one argument that I have heard for not giving Black Americans uh, reparations is that we are in a nation. And most other nations, those are the people that are given uh, reparations, people that are represented by a nation. That is the only argument that I've ever heard or the only real reason that I've ever heard that people say that that's why black people haven't uh, received reparations in this country. And that wasn't from some kind of white dude. That was a black dude that was explaining we need to build our own nation because that's who gets reparations, nations, not people. That, that was the only one that I've heard that almost maybe could make sense in a way. But to me, there's really no logical reason why black folks should not receive reparations based on the history of this country and what they've done for uh, for other groups of people um, based on treatment. Uh, we're talking about um, other groups of people who have not, not gone through nearly the suffering uh, that, that we've gone through. And not only have they not gone through the suffering, the length of time that is the uh, suffer of uh, suffering that has happened with Black Americans, okay, you could take all those other groups together and combine them, and it does not even equal up to the amount of time to th that, that Blacks have suffered within uh, within this nation. And even a case like uh, Israel, uh, we had nothing to do with uh, anything that happened to the. Uh, the uh, Jewish people in uh, in Germany during the World War II era, and we still pay them every year, handsomely every year. We still give them give them a check to make sure that they're taken care of and uh, protected. So if they can do it for people who are oppressed, not by this nation, and they're only really oppressed with the with, with someone's whole foot on their neck for a total of ten years, I believe nine to ten years, then there's no reason why there shouldn't be anything for us. So, like I said, there's there's no reason for it. Antoine. Yeah, I agree with Greg. There's no valid reason for it. I think at the end of the day, if you've compensated other groups with reparations, then why not African-Americans or descendants of slaves absolutely should be compensated. 
um, whenever it's brought up, you can hear immediately almost like a collective, ga collective gasp from people wanting to deny that. And my question to them would be, why? Why not? Um, I think that if you've compensated other groups and some folks still get compensated, why not African-Americans? Why not descendants of slaves? Um, it's one of the greatest, if not the greatest atrocity in the history of the world. And I don't think that it gets enough as much as people are aware of it. It doesn't get what it deserves in terms of, hey, you know what? This was really bad. It, it gets swept under the rug. It gets told that get over it. It's not that bad. Do you really need reparations? What good is it going to do? It's always um, a but. And there shouldn't be a proverbial but when it comes to reparations for us. And um, that's really what I have to say about it at this moment. But I'm disappointed it hasn't been, but I'm not surprised. <clears throat> <laughs> that's that's an accurate statement. Uh, Coney. Uh, actually, before I do that, before I get to Coney, um, let me introduce Takara to everybody. And I'll re re, re, uh, re Hello. I'll readdress the question for you uh, when it's your turn after Coney does. Uh, Coney, go ahead, man. Yeah, so um, Antoine brought up a, a good point. He said, why not? Um, and I think the biggest reason why not is that would force so many people in this country to have to atone for their sins. It would have it would force them to admit the wrongdoings that they've done. And, and in their eyes, they don't believe necessarily that they did anything wrong. Um, you know, this country was was built off of the backs of Black people, um, literally to the tune of, if I'm not mistaken, the last time I read it, um, the, the American economy amassed something close to $1.3 trillion yeah. um, during the time of slavery. And, and again, it was 100% free labor. Um, they were able to thrive. They were able to make uh, us at one point or another the greatest country in the world, all off of our backs. Um, to answer the question, our reparations, um, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and like Greg has said and, and like Antoine has said, there is no valid reason as to why um, it can't happen. I will say, depending upon the what and what it looks like, that is the thing that, that would make me the most curious. I don't want money um, as just reparations. We'll get into um, that in a second. <laughs> okay, well, we'll, 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 I'll pause. Again. Okay, all right. So Takara, just so you're just so you're fully aware of the first question. The first question was, is there a valid reason for not giving reparations to descendants? Well, no, there's not a valid reason, not for us, but it's a valid reason for them. I mean, there are continued efforts to maintain structural racism, systemic racism. Um, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, we know over the years that's what they've done. They have, um, you know, when one system is dismantled, they create another. Uh, I mean, reparations is, you know, not exactly a system. It would, you know, I mean, it's, you know, a way to set, you know, correct you know things that they've done in the past and like you know other people have said today about um you know admitting the wrongs that they've done and you know atoning for those things but um i think that you know they have their own reason that's valid to them is they got you know just hate for black people they don't care unfortunately and we shouldn't be asking for it. i mean be ideal if we <laughs> we need to just like you know, we could like take it. Is well, let me, oh, sad. Let me, let me posit a question to everybody. What do you say to the argument of it would just cost America too much money to be able to repay at this point? I had seen an estimate in an article that said literally every black person who is considered a descendant would receive one hundred and fifty-one million dollars. Not, not, not. Not per family, per person would receive up to one hundred and fifty-one million dollars based off the math. So, what do you say to people who would say, "Well, it's just too costly. We can't, we can't buy back what happened." Basically, through so reparations. what? Okay. So, I mean, look what it. I mean, I mean, like, I mean, okay. So, the things that we have dealt with, they talk about, you know, oh, we need to get over it, and 
you know, it happened in the past and they need to let it go. But those things are generational trauma is very real. There's lots of research that talks about that epigenetics. Those things have predisposed us to lots of things that we are not going to be able to get rid of. You caused it. You did it. So I don't care about, you know, talking about, oh, you know, like they they don't they don't have enough money and, you know, it would be too costly. And, you know, all the excuses, they got money for everything else that they need. If they really want to be good people and set things right, they need to cough up that cash. Wow. Or stop taxes or do whatever the hell you know they need to do. But I mean, all them that I don't feel any, I would not feel any sympathy for them because what we endure, no other people have endured, and it's priceless. So I don't care nothing about no, you know, about the no, I that I would have no sympathy. Nope. No passion no shown at all. Uh, no, go ahead. I thought you were I could care that. less. They could all be poor. And desolate on the street. I wouldn't care. That's our show, folks. We like to thank everybody for tuning in to Black Events. <laughs> <laughs> on reparations, we like to thank everybody for tuning in. No, go ahead, Antoine. Yeah, I was going to just keep this simple. Here. I agree wholeheartedly with what Takara said. I mean, I could care less. If you ask what it cost us, it cost a lot of people their lives, right? It cost generations of people a chance at a better life. And for some people, a chance at life, period, right? Families ripped apart, death, people are not between who is who. And if you get to where we are currently in history, right, in 2022, you see the effects long term of slavery, of Blacks building up this country for free, everybody benefiting but Black people, right? So whatever it costs, they got to be able to write the check because they wrote the check that cost a lot of people their lives, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Greg or Coney, y'all y'all got anything to add to that or no? Not really. Oh, I, I mean, call hundred percent bullshit on oh. on that. A hundred percent bullshit. Family show. I mean, what, what happened? just just recently, I don't know how much money we've given to Ukraine. Just out the blue. They're in COVID. I don't know how many checks they cut just out the blue. That was different. PPP loans just out the blue. PPP loans. For people that have millions upon millions of dollars, they're giving loans to people that don't need loans. Hmm. So there's there's literally no excuse. Now I'm not saying they got to yeah. give it up in all one lump sum. <laughs> what you need to do is let's make a deal. <laughs> let's make a deal. <laughs> <laughs> let's make a deal here. Let's, let's, let's make a deal. <laughs> you 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 give me a, you give me some checks every now and then, and I don't pay taxes here. And, uh, you know, you raise up the taxes of the previous slave owners. And, uh, you know, let's let's make this happen. Well, let, we'll, we'll get into to, to that in the second question. But, Coney, did you have anything to add before we go to the website? No, I mean, at the end of the day, all the points here made were valid. Um, there is no real reason as to why it can't happen. Will it be costly? Absolutely. It's definitely going to cost a shit ton of money. But, uh, again, you know, um, We've done far more for far less, so I'm I'm, I'm all for it. Well, we'll see. Exactly. About that. Let's let's go. Well, yeah. All I'm saying is, for for all these pro life people, think of all the lives they can save with the money that they're giving us. Uh poppycock. Those people are already born. Um, oh, let's go to the website. Guy on the couch. Uh, what you got? Guy on the couch. Guy on the couch. What you got? Man? All right. For question number one, is there a valid reason for not giving reparations to descendants? RC says, Hell no. The only reason to not pay is that the amount could never be enough. But that's like saying there's no need to put someone in prison because their crime was too heinous. Bottom line is there's no real reason. Back to you. I mean, they, they're basically on the same line as you guys are. Uh, is anything, anything left to add to this one or y'all want to just get into the next one? I think we should probably just get into the next one because everyone's been hitting towards it already anyway. But before we do, let me go ahead and do, give you guys a couple of plugs for the website, which is www.blackadvancement.com, where you can do research on all of our topics that we do. You can go to the topic section and even uh, you know recommend a topic that we should cover on here. You could also go there and go to our events page where you can see things like what shows we have coming up, what kind of uh, uh, events we have coming up, and what kind of solutions that we're working on. Uh, you could also go to our In History page, which currently only has one entry, but it's a very good entry. And it's about the Daughters of the Confederacy. Read something, read it. Okay, anyway, we're gonna go on to question number two, which is a question that you guys have all actually been hitting towards. And I'm gonna let Antoine go first on this one. 
Uh, how should reparations be paid out, in your opinion? It's a great question. Um, I really don't know. I mean, the easy answer is to say cash, but there's it, it's deeper than that, right? They literally, Greg brought up the most excellent point before I could say it. They just wrote a big ass check to Ukraine, like nothing, right? That's it, just wiped, it, it is, it is. But, you know, so it's like, would cash be enough in terms of reparations? I think it's a start, baseline, right? But is that it? No. Um, I really don't know what would be acceptable in terms of, you know, you, you're talking about like way over 400 years worth of shit that we as a people have gone through, right? You're yeah. talking about structure. You're talking about um, the way people view the world, what they view as greatness, the yardstick of excellence. And, you know, we're never at the top of that in terms of what people look at when they think of Black people. And it's unfortunate because that was also intentional. So in terms of money, I don't think money is just going to solve it all. Hmm. Takara. I agree. Money won't fix it all. I tend to be more in the vein of uh, tax breaks. Um, I like the idea of, you know, giving us, you know, some period of years where we don't pay federal and state taxes. Hmm. I mean, ideally, we wouldn't pay none at all, right? Maybe we wouldn't pay, um, you know, sales tax either, but, you know, wow. I'm like, but at the very least, federal, <laughs> you know, but really, it shouldn't be like any, we should have to pay federal tax, income tax. I, I feel like we should, you know, have all of that stopped you know for some period of time I mean, uh, you know i did look it'd be nice if they just said that for 400 years but of course that won't happen um but you know maybe they could give us four years 40 years of no taxes i mean it would make a significant difference um and and i'm also and not just taxes i'm also talking about medicare med like we shouldn't have to put into any of that mm. and we should still get those benefits you know all of those that money that comes out of our check should all stay in there we should get 100% of our pay. <laughs> um, I mean, because if you think about it, they take like 30% at least, you know, of your pay that goes, in, you know, that goes for taxes, retirement, all these other things. And they should they should put our retirement, our retirement should be paid automatically by them. Uh, they could give us refunds. They could start there and say, I mean, just like they're doing refunds for federal your know, student loans give us refunds for all the money that we put into our retirement funds and y'all go ahead and put that in there and give us the earlier retirement age because we've been working way longer than all you white people so we should be able to retire at like 55 and y'all can wait till 70. Two words crack legs. Oh, black people. I mean, black people. My bad. I, th I thought you was going to. Uh, and I do like crab legs. I, I do. Really <laughs> a lot of my extra money on crab legs. I sure would. Yeah. Foul on them. Okay. Uh, Coney, I'm sorry. Yep, in my early retirement, no. <laughs> crab legs, fried chicken, and watermelon. No. No. <laughs> um, I, I will say that if they talk about reparation and only make it monetary, uh, I would not be able, I actually would, would turn it down. And I say that under the guise of once they've written the check, then they'll say, all right, you no longer have any other excuse for any of the wrongdoings or inequalities that you're going to face now. We, we paid you. Like you wanted money, we paid you. So here it is. Now there are no more excuses. But the problem is, is that the inequality still exists. The barriers and the constructs to social inequality and racism still exist. So for me, if we're talking reparations, I'm talking cash. I'm also talking tangible uh, assets. I'm also talking education. I'm talking healthcare. I'm talking, um, you know, programming, putting programming in place. Because at the end of the day, a lot of the gaps that exist now uh, as when it comes both socially and economically, it's lack of knowledge. So I want programs put in place. I want education put in place. I want free education um, for everybody who's black, you know, don't care for how long. And, and you know, I, I don't even want to put a time constraint on that either. Uh, but at the end of the day, if if we are talking about reparations and it's just cash, I, I literally would say that'd be a terrible idea um, because what are you going to do when all that cash is gone? And the problems that plague us now that have plagued us for the last 400 years are still going to exist in 100 years. They're going to exist in 10 years. They're going to exist in five years. And then their response is going to be, hey, 
You got your check. You got your money. What else you need? Cold response. Uh, Greg. I disagree with all of you on this whole cash business. Because you know what cash does? Cash can afford you to fix all those things. I thought you were going to say rules everything around me, but go on. <laughs> well, there, there's definitely that too, because cash, yeah. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but if you get the cash, you can fix all these things. The reason why we're in the, most of these problems as is, is because we are not economically valuable. Once we have the economic value, we can fix all these things ourselves and we don't need them at all. Huh. So with the cash should come a plan. So the cash is the beginning. And that, if you give us the money, we can fix it all ourselves. You, it, it, it's real hard to be racist when you got enough money to get, to get your own. Huh. Once you can get your own, that there is called power. And once you have power, you can make things change for you. That's huh. how they do it. They, they're, they're, out so they, here, they're, they're out here buying candidates. You know why they do that? Because they can afford it. We can, if we get the money, we can afford it. We can play the same so, dirty game that they're playing with the money. I feel a rebuttal. We've already out. had the best teachers. They have shown us how to cheat, scam, and hustle. Once we get the cash, the only reason we can't do it is because we don't got the cash. You give us the cash, we can do the same thing and make these things turn for us. That's well, but it's I'm not saying. just the cash. I mean, I think so, you know that it's not just no, the money, right? It's I'm, the, I'm, it's yeah, the that's system. Where, exactly. But you it's, know what the, it's the system by? is more the than system? just money. They always find another way, you know, like you say, to suppress us and to keep us out of the game. You know, all they do is keep moving the goalposts. They'll find, I mean, they always find another way. You know, yeah. and then you but, know, and, and, and Brandon was moving into some other issues that are that are problem, like you say, that would ideally be fixed with you know resources and education in the black community. Because you, there are some of us who you can give us all the money, where it's still not, we still gonna end up poor because in a lot of you know, in a lot of situations for black people, poverty is a mindset, right? Before it's actually like your life. Oh, let me let me rebuttal all these things. I'm not saying that everyone's going to do the right thing with the money because whites have had all the opportunities. Some of them are still broke. Not everyone's going to be Rockefeller. It's just the way the system works. There's going to be rich people. There's going to be poor people. There's going to be responsible people. There's going to be people that piss away their money on Nikes and Rams. I, but <laughs> yeah. as a, I felt like he looked at me when he said it. Though. That's the problem. That's I, what my problem. I most is. certainly did. But, <laughs> but the point being is, the reason why they're able to move the goalposts is they because they can afford to move the goalposts. Do you not understand the level of greed of these people? They don't give a shit where the check is coming from. They just want the check. And if they get the check to move some things for whoever's got the money, that's the way the system works. Do you really think that these people really believe that the Second Amendment is that big? No, the Colt brothers think it's that big. Hmm. If this was just based on morality, it'd be a totally different thing. This is all about money. The whole system is built on greed. So if you got the cash to play, then you can play. That's well, not necessarily I don't, true, I don't, though, because don't. you can have the money to play. But at the end of the day, if you're if it's exclusionary practices at play, right, which is a huge part of the disparity right now that we hate, see in society. You know? Hate supersedes greed. Go ahead, go ahead, Connie. What? Hold on, let me let me finish up. Yes, hate can supersede greed. I agree with you one hundred percent. But if we've got our cash and we know what to do with our cash, once again, we don't have to deal with them. Once we get that money, we can do all the rest by ourselves. You want some schools? Build some schools. Then they'll come all, and destroy it like they do everything wanna, else that to, we do. Once, well, once they so. give us the money, I don't want to have to lean on them for nothing. All but, I want but, is the money so but, I can get away from you and do my thing. But, but great, that, like Wall system. Street, right? When, when we, we were getting money, right? We were building. And what happened to that? Let me let, again, let me let Conan get in. Let me let Conan get in real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead, Conan. So my biggest rebuttal to that would be is how much money is enough? Um, I mean, and, and again, it goes back to what I said earlier. Not everybody knows what to do with money. Um, you know, Takar said it, it's it, poverty. It's a mindset. It, it's generational. Um if I give somebody a hundred million dollars and they've never had a hundred million dollars before, they're not going to know what to do with it. And then to top that off, 
you are speaking from which I 100 percent understand, Greg. You're, you're speaking from an individual standpoint. You're saying, "Give me the money, I'm going to be all right." How much money is enough money to make a change? I mean, are we talking 100 black people pulling together their 151 million? Are we talking a thousand? Are we talking a billion? Like. That's the thing. And the downside about it is I do not believe that there are enough of us who have that same mindset of saying, you know what, we're going to collectively pull all of our stuff together, all of it together so that we can bring each other up. I think that unfortunately, and, and this is part of the slavery system and part of America in and of itself is that we've been trained to compete against each other as opposed to working with one another. So you give me $150 million, give you 150 million are we to use that 150 million collectively to do better for ourselves and again and to car said it's you give uh, you give every black person in this country 150 million dollars they will change the game up to make it so that it's no longer about money they will they will make it something completely utterly different where up uh, you know you only you have to have green eyes in, in order to be able to vote or, or like it's something wild like they're going to do something well, to change the game well, once again i say with that if you have the money and you don't like the system, then they can say, go back to Africa. And I gladly will. I will <laughs> take my money and get the hell up out of here. But you know, they colonize over there and too. Remain White and Chinese. They colonize Africa. Now, so. An American citizen. They working on that too. Check. You said what now? <laughs> Chinese and white people over there colonizing Africa as we speak. So they working on that already. Once again. If I've got the money, I can buy my own little plot in Africa. This is what you're saying. Money is power. Let's let's go to the That's website. That's all it is. Hold on. I, I still haven't finished my other part yet. Oh, okay. As far as, well, as, far as the reparations, this is what I want for, as far as reparations go. You can give us a large lump sum at first. And then for the next 400 years, we should have tax-free. Uh, everything should be tax-free for us and the taxes that are collected, that's what you can use to start paying back our lump sum and everything else. So you raise up the, the, the taxes of the oppressor for their Negro tax and you pay us with that and you keep it moving. And like I said, and if I don't like it, I will leave and I will remain an American citizen and you will give me my check while I'm up in Zimbabwe. <laughs> So let me let me let me ask you a quick question as it relates to that. Let's say that you have uh, uh, anybody else in this country like and because it's the the term that I've heard time and time again. I didn't own any slaves. I didn't do it. So why 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 do why do I have to pay taxes on some uh -huh. shit that you know my, my that my my crazy people did four hundred years ago? That's not my, I'm here trying to make a change, but now you're gonna tax me for it. What what was the response to that? My response to that is you benefited from that which your ancestors did. Now, if your ancestors were back there fighting for us, which I highly doubt, you might have a valid excuse, but you, you weren't. So therefore, you have to pay for what your ancestors did. And just like I had to pay for the fact that my ancestors were slaves and I was cheated, life ain't fair. Sorry. And, and it ain't fair to us for 400 years. We still, we still, like our lives right. are still not being treated fairly. We still mm -hmm. haven't achieved any equality. So like you say, I don't care nothing about... Exactly. I do. don't give half a damn about your feelings. Oh, you okay. had a 400-year head start and you still ain't shit. So that's on you. Family show. Uh, let's go to the website. Let's go to the website. Uh, guy on the couch, what you got? Okay, for question number two, how should reparations be paid out? Michelle says, I agree that tax relief is probably the best option since, I think, it addresses the usual pushback because it technically does not remove money contributed by others from the tax pool. Free or at least discounted higher education sounds good too, and possibly federally guaranteed mortgages for primary residences. Back to you. Let me ask you guys something based off of what was just said on the website. Do you guys believe that if they started giving out reparations, it would be means tested? Well, <laughs> let me say it another way. I already know that they would try to means test it. But do you believe that would be fair in terms of the means testing? No. What do you mean by means testing? So by means testing, I mean, for instance, right, when they had the uh, the the give back for people who did a, a college loans or something to that extent. If you made a certain amount, they weren't going to give you the stuff because they're like, well, you make like, we don't want to give people who went to Harvard this, this thing, which is another, uh, stuff, another day. I, I mean, like, I, I would firmly say that that's bullshit. Okay, let's keep it up. Uh, because there were people that came to this country <laughs> rich and they got slaves. 
they already had. Was anyone going to be like, yo, I don't need these slaves. You already got money. <laughs> right. I agree so with I don't you. Care. I have zero feelings. For the you know, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. You said you don't need slaves. You already got money. Yeah. Was, was anyone saying that? No. Nobody was saying that. No, I was like, hold on, Mr. Rich Man. What do you need funny. all these slaves for? You're rich. You can play your employees. No one said that. <laughs> that's a fantastic you absolutely right yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fantastic point though um but the, go ahead connie i thought it looks like you're about to say something about that but oh no i was i was just gonna uh chime in and say that's that's one of the greatest things i've heard in quite some time <laughs> <I> respect <laughs> that you know what man let me just plug the website I, that was a good one so I'll, end it, I'll end the question too let's just plug the website uh, www.blackadvancement.com. While you're there, why don't you take a chance uh, and go to our debate section where you can see more awesome conversations such as this one, recommended websites, the OG of websites that we started recommending, and that was uh, gracious enough to let us represent them, Jan Lee Jewelry. Jan Lee Jewelry is handmade, handcrafted. You should go check it out. Anyway, uh, another thing that we wanted to point you guys to is our book of the month section. Uh, the book that we are promoting for this episode is Lest We Forget by Velma Via. Thomas. Now let's go on to our third and final question. Uh, what would you do with your reparations? And for this, I will go ladies first and start with Takara. Takara, what would you do with your reparations? Um, I would save some so that, you know, um, other generations could also enjoy this, you know, because we know if we ever get it, I'm sure it's going to be a one-time thing. It's not going to be generational. So uh, that would be, you know, save and I would probably, you know, buy some property and maybe even consider, um, you know, doing some other investments, some type of maybe offering. I mean, I work in mental health, so I would probably think of doing some type of, uh, you know, therapy initiative for the African-American community where it would be like more affordable. And then all you people with reparations can donate money to, you know, to help more people. <laughs> <laughs> Counting other people's checks. Uh, Tony, <laughs> go on. What would you do? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I I I don't have a clue. I honestly do not know what I would do. Um, because at the end of the day, I brought it up beforehand. Once the money is gone, then then that will be their reasoning or their rationale behind saying, you know, that's 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 tough. Um, Yeah, I, I I literally have no idea what I would do with it. Uh, I, I don't. I mean, because at the end of the day, you know, I would like to think about giving back and whatnot and, and you know, trying to do things to take care of the community. But if everybody's got $150 million, what am I giving money to? <laughs> like, 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 I, you want me to get home for my 150 but you got 150 too. Like, like, you, you, you put me in? All right. If everybody got one fifty, everybody puts in fifteen million dollars to help everybody to help create some of these programs stuff that I was talking about. But again, I I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, it, it would need. I'll, I'll go back again. It needs to be more than money. Um, because if it's just money, then then you're trying to put a a, a band aid over a shotgun. Um, and it's 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 not gonna work. How much so. college tuition would be a million dollars a quarter? That's exactly how they would change the game. Yes, it, it would definitely do that. You give somebody, all right, so fine. You give somebody $150 million. Okay, now it costs $2 million to, to build a house in, in Lower Maryland. Now it's going to cost you $20 million to build a house yeah. in Lower Maryland. Yeah. Like they're going to change. That's why I said it can't just be money. So to answer your question, I don't know what I would do with mine. Uh, because I would hope that it's not just money, it's not just cash, because I, I say it all the time, cash is king, but power is more important than money. And you don't necessarily have to have money to have power. Uh, I, I'll go real quick, since mine is, uh, I'm just passing through, um, two words, crab legs. Crab legs. <laughs> uh, Greg, what would you do with the monies? Well, seeing that the goal is once we got this check, we got to use it for the proper way. So what I would do is I would uh, get together a group of financial experts and put together a whole financial uh, literacy, uh, literacy schools for Blacks. That's what I would do. We'd all pitch in and we'd all figure out how this system works as far as money goes. And we'd, we'd make sure we'd ensure that we keep our money. 
I would like donate I said, to that. Not everyone's going to do it. <laughs> not, not all of us is going to make it to the mountaintop, baby. But a lot of us will. So I, so I, I will say right now, you don't have to. So to, to the end, Greg, you don't have to hire a whole bunch of them. You just come talk to your boy. Like, you know, I, I, I know. Some there, you go. So, there you go. Here we go. There you go. See, Coney? That's I'm just saying, about. you know, no, no, you no, 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 literacy, no, no, you what? will be charged to teach. You'll be charged <laughs> to teach these Negroes how to keep their money. No need to do that. No need to go. Fund <laughs> I, just, uh, <laughs> well, I, I can do that. Yeah, so like instead, I said, if, instead of if, if, instead of paying those ten people, what what you gonna pay them? You just pay that to me, and, and we're good. Yeah, Wait, what? <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. You you no. you can start an investment groups and all these other things. We will figure out this system, yeah. and everybody will keep their money flowing. Antoine, that's right. That that's what I would do with my money. I'd invest it in that. Everything has a cost, Goodman. Everything has a cost. Everything yeah. got a price. Antoine, that's fine. Like I said, and you're the one to teach us all that. That's right. <laughs> Antoine. <laughs> For the third time. No, For the third uh, time. Real simple. I, I, I would sit on my money until I figured out, it depend on what year the check was written, if we're talking from a monetary <laughs> standpoint, to understand what's happening at that time. Um, mm -hmm. I would take a small portion of the money and definitely build uh, an institute or a school of the sorts there. Um, specifically for Black people to be able to build them up, whether it's like similar to STEM, um, anything dealing with finances, anything dealing with dealing with building the future, so that we would be not only well versed in these things, but building up our own community through that. Um, because I feel like anything else, it's gonna go away after a while. You know, cars go away, clothes change over. Who decides? You know what your taste level is. That's on you, right? I want people being able to build something sustainable for the future so that eventually that money goes towards developing itself and whatever the money looks like at that point in time. The reason I say that is because I don't know if you all remember from like stocks like a few months back, might have been longer than a few months ago when GameStop, right? And yeah. people were like crying and crashing it. And what did they do? When they started losing money, they changed the game, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm always very leery with just pure cash. Um, there's other things, you know, minerals, land, you know, mm. property. And I only say property, but land, you know, they don't build any more of that right now. Right. And so I'm already a little on edge when you keep seeing so many people go to space, you know, trying to figure out like, hey, this place is livable. It's like, what are you about to do here on Earth? You know, so it's like um, in the meantime, in between time, I would love for black people to just be able to grow our own assets, define what that looks like. The same way these people were trying to sell JPEGs about uh, a year or so ago, and now those things were worth like two dollars, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, NFT, hey, get NFT, in now. Right? It's like NFT, right? That's the yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Those non fungible yeah. things, and it was like, it's all made up. Is what people decide. Hey, this has value, you know? You can say this has value, and then what, you know? In another year's time, enough people bought into it. The people who got rich off of it decided, you know what? It has no more value. Now it's a bunch of people walking around with this with nothing, you know? So. um just really developing a society, if you will. Yeah. And just before I, before I go to the website, just on that note, when you see things like that, uh, if a normal person hears about that, it's too late. Um, <laughs> by the time, I know if I hear about an NFT and they're talking about people investing, I'm like, oh, it's too late then. I'm not going to do anything. Guy on the couch, what you got on that? Right, question number three, what would you do with your reparations? 40 acres and a gun says if we got a cash settlement of any significant amount, you know, six, seven figures, I would invest a third, buy a house slash land in another country, and spend the change on any debts. Back to you. Seems reasonable. Uh, I want to highlight. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I want to highlight a point, right? Obviously, it's from a movie, right? So I'm. I, used to, I grew up big in the comic books and stories, right? Stephen King, Marvel, all of that stuff. So when you talk about, let's say, like Wakanda, what made it great is that it was his own entity, right? Mm -hmm. And so people from the outside world had little to no influence there. And you saw, like, again, in a fictional land, but you got to see the flourishing that was taking place. Technology, education, the power of the mind, the ability to know how to maneuver in various situations, just everything. And I think that that's what we're missing. Um, it's really towards Greg's point. He's not wrong. What he said, I was laughing, but it's just like, you know, money can, in theory, solve the problem, but only if it's with an asterisk, you have enough people invested in the right direction, um, proverbially, every the right direction. Everybody 
will consider what the right direction is something different. Um, but if you're talking about long-term thinking, um, the generational wealth that Takara is talking about, you have to start by investing in yourself. And to invest in yourself is to invest in your community and build it together. Um, it's possible. But the other piece, though, I mean, I like that idea. And like you say, what Greg is talking about, but I'm glad you brought up Wakanda because Wakanda was secret and anybody couldn't just go there, right? Like <laughs> where it was, was like a secret. And maybe that's what we need, you know, to be more modest with all of our wealth and keep it to ourselves and don't share it with anybody, right? Don't let them, don't let the white people know where we at because they come and find everything. That's how we got Columbus Day. They come and ruin every fucking thing, okay? They Family take over. Star. So yeah, we need to be like <laughs> secret and we need to have, you know, um, what is uh, what is it? What what's the tattoos like? Um, <laughs> black light tattoos, <laughs> so that they can't, right? Yep, that's what we need. And then you, you, and then we'll just be secret off living our own life without them. We don't need to be flexed on the white people. We just need to disappear so they can go and live on their own without us. That now that is what we should do with our reparations. Make Wakanda real. And I'd like to thank secret. everybody for watching the Black Advancement. <laughs> uh, I'll just go ahead and plug the website uh, if we are able to come oh. back on YouTube. Go ahead, Greg. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah, to, to get back to everybody's point where y'all keep on just saying it's just not finances, it's just not the money. Here we go. <laughs> Who are y'all trusting to give you all these programs and give you a fair shake to give you all the wisdom that you're looking for when it comes to this. When I it comes to these programs and everything else that all you're I'm trying saying to get. is open the door and I get it myself in the words of James Brown. Thank you. Hmm. And you're going to do that without getting all the money. <laughs> if that's your plan, then you might want to get all the money. Well, I so, can't hate supersedes greed. And that's why, you know, the point is, is, is is not just you know the money alone is not enough when we're dealing with systemic racism. All they will I, do I is create a new so system said, to suppress. These are all valid so points. I said your idea is right. We just need to keep it a secret so they can't come and ruin it. <laughs> yeah. Look, if, if it's coming out they tax money, the secret is out. That's the one. <laughs> Number so the two, secret is out. <laughs> this is ridiculous. You keep y'all keep saying hate over the uh, hate is going to be hate over greed. Yeah, right? Exactly. So what makes you guys think that these programs and everything are going to be legit? Can I say, can I say something? Are really you good? still going to trust these people to not give you all the money and then teach you the ways on how to make it in this place? Uh, let me say something real quick, Greg, because I think that another thing that um occurred to me, like, well, this has occurred to me way before that. Um, I hope people realize that there are certain, there's a certain segment of the United States that would burn this place into the ground before they would let something like that happen. Um, yes, there is. Yeah, like, like before any of this would take place. We're in the beginning they, stages of it. Well, I mean, like they they were about to burn this place to the ground for a guy that was a talk show host. I mean, like that's, I mean, like let's, let's and that was because of, of, that was coming off the heels of the, us having the first ever president that had any shade of hue whatsoever so um you know like taking all that together i i have to, i tend to to agree a little bit more with the idea of what it would mean if we were to get reparations in terms of um in terms of them not only like changing the game but like like coney was saying like if you don't if you don't undergird that with fixing society as it is already when your when your ego is ba is based on white supremacy and white privilege, equality feels like oppression. Correct. Those people will not accept that, and that's why I like the idea of Wakanda, and we just be a whole secret. This and then they how, this, is this is not how this is gonna win. This is not, we're not gonna be able to do that. This yeah. not gonna, <laughs> I told you. The and we be have out. all our own stuff. Like you said, we make our own community, make our own, th like you say, we train our own people. And if, you know, you don't want to act right, you don't want to keep it secret, you get outcast and you can go stay with, you know, your the white people and Yo. figure out your way <laughs> there. <laughs> No, not but, you know, I mean, I that, that's the problem is that if it, even if it's a debt, they will suffer detriment to themselves before they would let us, you know, like you say, uh, rise up. Rise up! I'm not trying to be a con I'm not trying to be a contrarian at all. Um, but but I think that I don't know, man. I I, I feel like 
uh, even if we were to, to try to do something like a Wakanda, right? And we had the means to be able to to do it. And uh, even like, even have a secret hide place in the mountains and have all that tech. Um, black people have been over the years very, for lack of a better term, Americanized. And by that, I mean like individualized, you know what I mean? People are doing for themselves as right. opposed to for community. That's why we have groups like, not just black advancement, but there's thousands of groups that focus on problems within the black community because you know we've seen that the the we've seen the the benefit of having uh having multiple people attack a problem from multiple sides but not everybody sees that i'll never forget i was in like a um basketball tournament an mlk basketball tournament and a dude had said one of the, like one of the most ignorant things i'd ever heard he was like a fight had broke out of course and uh and um and someone was trying to break it up and they was like well they was like, well, think about what the tournament's about. It's Martin Luther King's sermon. He's like, he died. We got our freedom. I was like, what? <laughs> what, happened? what happened here? Like that was his that was his response to that when someone said it. And this is another black dude. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, I would love. That goes with the that. education, though, right? I, I mean, of- no, but I, I'm I'm just saying that I would love to think that everybody is going to be on that road, but people have become individualized and Americanized in their ideas. If you give. And that's the reason why if you give somebody 151 million, some of them are going to go broke because oh, they, I mean, crab legs, man, crab legs. So, no, to your point, there's people out there that will never be on board, right? So yeah, let's look at it like this. Real shit. Malcolm X, who betrayed him? Who betrayed Martin Luther King, right? Photographer they found out living in Queens died and shit a few years back, right? A lot of people hadn't yeah. even known that. Yeah, A lot of our historical people who paved the way for us to have the progress that we do have today were betrayed by us ultimately at some point right but have been uh, fancy right yeah i was yeah, just coons gonna coon, baby coons gonna coon. and, that's and not so, how that's not how <laughs> the goal is not to change the mind of people who don't have the vision the goal is for people who have the vision to align right so that you can mm-hmm. build and develop with those who do have the vision right mm-hmm. even idealistically yeah you'd have like a in hiding but in plain sight so many other groups of people build and develop and are advancing in ways that have nothing to do with money because obviously they have had this money for generations at this point right mm-hmm. so there's other things that they're able to do we unfortunately have to start at the beginning of hey now we have this money right what do we do with that right how do you keep from going broke how do you enrich the society how do you build the society how do you grow it Knowledge is really the key. And from the knowledge, the power is where ultimately would come out of that. That's what people have always been afraid of, people having the access, right? Because access is really what separates us from like many other groups out there. So if we have the access, what's on the other side of that mountain, proverbially speaking, is the freedom that a lot of us have seeked, you know, or our parents have seeked. You know, think about it. A lot of our parents are at least 60s, 70s or something, if not older at this point, right? Mm-hmm. They've lived their entire lives just to get to the point that we are now, where we have some choices, but still not where we need to be or should be. And so when I look at it from a perspective of what it takes to build, building is painful because you have a meeting in a mind. Aji thinks one way, Greg thinks another, Takar thinks another, Kony thinks one way, I have another, right? And those are your five leaders of it. And it's like, wow, how do you get everybody on the same page? What does that take, right? What does that look like? Especially when it's 150 million, in theory, 150 million, 150 million. Mm-hmm. And so, you have to have some kind of alignment um, towards a goal of actually building long term. By building long term, your immediate future starts to flourish there. You know, the folks who have kids now or have decided to, even people who don't want kids, they're building up for, you know, what can be and what you're going to be able to benefit from in the next five to eight years or so. So um, that structure that we lack that other folks have access to, that they have safe havens at where they are. I can't say what I want to say on this call, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I might say that for after, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all I'm saying is financial literacy. That's where you go with this. We don't got to be all on the same page. We just got to know the numbers don't lie. That's all we got to know. Hmm. Financial literacy. That's why if I told you if we get, if the, ever there was a day where we get these reparations popping, that's where my money would go. It would go into financial literacy so we can get this money to go, to, to go down from generation to generation to generation and build. 
We don't got to be on the same page if we all got money. Speaking of being on the same page, you could go to one of our pages at www.blackadvancement.com. And while you're there, why don't you go ahead and check out some of our fabulous shows, such as The Female Voice. I don't know. Somebody you might know might be on The Female Voice. Somebody here even. Scar. Also, you could also, uh, you know, check out other things like Hollywood Zoomcast, where people talk about movies or the obnoxious synopsis, where they take a chance on their news or the beautiful struggle, where they talk about problems in depth and then come up with solutions at the end. Regardless, that's all at the website, along with the donations page where we actually show what we uh, spend our money on. Can be dangerous, but it's not for us. Um, and also where you can find out black people you should know, such as Nanny of the Maroon. You know who that is? She's on the $500 bill in Jamaica. How much is a $500 bill in Jamaica? I'm not here for all that. Anyway, you could also go there for the solutions section, which is also at the website, which is the reason why we all chose to get together in the first place for Black Advancement Incorporated. And with all that being said, we'd like to thank you all for watching. Go to Facebook to follow us on The Black Advancement. Twitter, we're at Black Advancement, B-L-K. Uh, on IG, we're The Black Advancement. Or our website, which is www blackadvancement.com. That's right. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. So until next time, friends, uh, peace and advance. Oh, shout out to Hampton University. You know what it is. Homecoming, baby. Woo!